What's up you guys? Oh my god, I just turned the camera on and the battery is already dying. Really? BRB. I'm literally recording on my phone right now because I made a commitment to get this video up and both of my camera batteries are dead. So um, don't mind the iPhone quality. I honestly, you guys, I don't even think that I'm going to edit this video. Um, I just really want to be super raw and authentic with you guys. It has been probably five or six months since my last YouTube upload. I've gotten lots of questions. Where have you been? Are you coming back to YouTube? What's going on? Um, and one thing I've always prided myself on throughout all of the years that I've shared my journey on social media um, is being completely real, authentic, vulnerable. Um, because at the end of the day, I think a lot of times with social media, we tend to compare ourselves to other people's highlight reels and what their seemingly perfect lives look like. And at the end of the day, that's not real life. Regardless of how uh, perfect somebody seems on social media, I guarantee you they're going through their own challenges, their own struggles as well. And the times that I have felt most fulfilled um, by my platforms, my social media platforms, are the times that I've been able to connect with you guys on a deep level um, by sharing something that has been a challenge for me or by sharing my vulnerabilities. Um, so that's what I'm gonna do. <laughs> Obviously, when you take a hiatus from anything, there's obviously something going on. And um, I'll be perfectly honest with you guys, 2018 kicked my ass. <laughs> it was uh, quite literally the hardest year of my entire life um, in a lot of ways, mentally, emotionally, physically. If you guys have been following me on Instagram, um, like I said, being real and authentic, is something that's always been important to me and so I have shared glimpses of things that have been going on um, so to put it just all out there my anxiety has been um, quite literally through the roof uh, over this last year um, and a lot of that has had to deal with a bunch of different factors that have been going on um, so let's rewind 2017 was the last time that I stepped on stage. It was July of 2017. And at that time, um, my focus really was just going all in um, with my business and being of service to the women that I work with. And if you've ever competed or if you've ever uh, engaged in any sort of competitive extreme sport, especially at the professional level, you know that it requires 100% of your mental capacity. And I knew that I could never truly make the impact that I, I know that I've been called on this earth by God to make um, if I didn't go all in with my business. And I have no regrets. Um, out of all of the struggles that 2018 has presented me, business has been great. <laughs> um, I've connected with my clients on the most incredible, incredible level, um, a deep rooted emotional level, really truly helping them not only transform on the outside, but really transform on the inside, making those massive mindset shifts, which ultimately play a role in making those behavioral transformations and really helping them connect to their own thoughts, feelings, and emotions. Um, as you guys may or may not know, our thoughts and our feelings predominantly are what drive our actions and our behaviors. So in helping my clients truly connect with their own thought patterns, their own emotions and feelings, I'm then able to help them change their behaviors. Um, and it really has been such an incredible journey this past year, um, really going all in with my business. But you know, I wanted to share that sort of that positive, um, but on the flip side, there have been a lot of challenges this past year. Uh, right after stepping off stage, um, my health really took a turn. Let me get some water. And it really did start to decline um, throughout the majority of my last prep. I kind of knew that at that point, my body was just like, girl, I'm done. Um, I mean, I competed at the professional level for 
four years. I mean, I went pro after my first year competing and then spent those next four years going so hard. Um, so I, I will never once bash the sport. Bodybuilding is still a passion of mine. I still go to the gym five, six days a week and I crush my workouts and I love lifting. Um, I'll never bash the sport, but what I will bash is the intensity at which I went about it. Um, you know, I got very much, I got sucked in and I really had this goal of making it to the Olympia. And, you know, throughout 2017 and 2016, I had multiple top five finishes. So I was racking up points and, um, for those of you that don't know, uh, in order to qualify for Olympia, you either need to win a pro show or earn enough points and you qualify via the point system. So when you start racking up those points, it just pushes you even further to just keep going hard. And um, so I'm, again, I'm not bashing the sport. It really is still something that I hold so close to my heart and love very much and have such a passion for. Um, but the intensity at which I went about it is the reason why I suffered physical implications um, after going so hard for five years. My hormones were just completely messed up for lack of a better word there. Um, I got blood work done right after I had decided to step down from competing and my hormones were that of a premenopausal woman. Like, what? Um, I hadn't had a period in three and a half years and things were just not good. Uh, digestion was wonky. Um, I was just, there were days where literally I would be curled up in a ball on a couch because I was just experiencing such bad inflammation like in over my entire body. I'll see if I can insert some clips or some photos for you guys that you can see. These are very vulnerable photos and you can see how just inflamed my entire body is from my face just down to everywhere. Um, and inflammation obviously is your body's response when it's fighting something. My body was not happy and as a response, massive inflammation. Um, and I, like I said, there were days where I was literally just curled up on a, in a ball on the couch because I was just in so much pain with distension and inflammation and that took a toll on my mental health because not just because of like, obviously I was uncomfortable with how I looked, but at the same time, um, it wasn't just that, you know, it was going from competing at, at, at such a, a high level and being so in control of your body, knowing that I could manipulate my diet, manipulate my training in order to achieve a certain look. Obviously that is the utmost control you can possibly have. And then completely flipping that switch off and losing that control completely. I mean, imagine that, imagine having the most control possible and then having that control completely ripped away from you and then not knowing why, well, I knew why, but not knowing what to do to remedy it. Um, and so at that point, I just, I, I, I knew that I had to figure out what to do. Um, there were just so many questions and I felt really hopeless at times, you guys, and Obviously that, that shot my anxiety through the roof. Um, and my anxiety is something I've always dealt with. I've been very open and honest with that, with you guys about that here on this channel and on my Instagram. And over the years, I, I've done a very good job at, um, coping with it and learning how to use it in a productive way. Um, and I think I've done a really good job at sharing that as well and being open about that because I know a lot of you guys that watch and that follow me, you know, you struggle with that as well. And I, I would, I love to help you guys and share with you guys the things that have worked for me. But at that time it felt like literally nothing was working. And I'm like, well, bro, how am I going to get on YouTube here and put a smile on my face and try and give value, give education, give inspiration when literally I just feel like shit. <laughs> like, I'm just going to be honest with you guys. Um, and I really did. Like I said, I felt hopeless. And that's the worst feeling to possibly feel. I, I, I really don't know that I can think of a of a quite of a worse feeling than that. Um, and for the first time in my life, I, I started experiencing depression. I get the chills just saying that because now I'm in a place talking to you guys where like, I'm really happy. 
I'm really happy. And I'm not crying because I'm sad. Like I'm crying because I think back of, on the girl that I was three, four, five months ago, feeling hopeless and just feeling like, feeling like I was stuck there. And just looking back on that and seeing how I feel now that I'm here talking to you guys and truly feeling so grateful to have come out of that dark, dark place. It was such a dark place, you guys. There were literally days where I couldn't get out of bed. Physically could not. And if you know me, like if you've been on this channel for a while, if you know me in, in my real, in real life, you know that like, I am an energetic, overly positive at times human being. I've been told that I'm annoyingly positive. <laughs> and you know what, I'd rather be annoyingly positive than consistently negative, but I felt so detached from that, from being that, that person that I knew myself to be. And that's what made things even harder. You know, waking up in the morning and, and feeling like you literally can't get out of bed. And then I would beat myself up for feeling that way. I would be like, this isn't you, Karen. Like, why are, why, why do you feel this way? You know, just get up. And, and I would literally just beat myself up for feeling defeated. Um, and I learned that I, you can't fight those feelings. Um, I learned that when any feeling or emotion comes over you, you, you have to just acknowledge it. You have to acknowledge it and, and don't resent it. Don't resent yourself for feeling any emotion. So instead of beating myself up, I decided to just accept that that was the feeling that I was feeling at that point and that it was okay. I let it be okay. I let myself sit with it for as long as I needed to. But I didn't allow myself to stay there. I knew that I had to do something. I didn't want to stay there. This is where I want to be. I, I, I want to be filled with energy and mental clarity and just feel like myself. And so... Uh, some of the things that I started doing um, slowly but surely, like this isn't like I made a massive mental transformation overnight, um, but some of the things I started doing were just making small commitments to myself. And if you guys want to know the number one way, if you leave this video with anything, leave with this, the number one way, I'm not gonna point at you, to improve your confidence in yourself is to make a commitment to yourself and stick to it. The number one way. And I'm not talking that you have to make any massive commitments to yourself. Sure, can you? But at that point in my, in my life where I was three to six months ago, I knew that I had to start small. So I started making very small commitments to myself. I would make like three small commitments per day. Even if one of them was just to get out of the bed, get out of bed and exercise for 20 minutes and then get outside and get myself a coffee, like small commitments and slowly but surely as I started sticking to those commitments, I just, my confidence started to grow and I just started to feel a little bit more alive. Um, I, I, I honestly, I got myself back into therapy that helped tremendously. Um, I cannot, I cannot recommend therapy enough. If you are feeling happy, go to therapy. If you're feeling sad, go to therapy. If you're feeling angry, go to therapy. Like just literally go to therapy. <laughs> just go. Like it's, it's honestly amazing. Um, if you guys have been here for a while, you know my background actually is in psychology. Um, so I am very, very, very passionate about talk therapy. It's something that I have 
many years of coursework and practicum and internship on and actually practice full time for three and a half years as a psychologist. So talk therapy is so powerful, you guys. Like literally, if you leave with this video with anything, leave it with the confidence and commitments to yourself and to go to therapy. Uh, so I got myself back into therapy and I really started leaning in more and more and more to my faith. Uh, faith is something that's always been very important and powerful for me. Um, and throughout that time, I did notice myself slipping away. I slipped away from everything and, and I'm not happy or proud of that, but I accept it. Um, but I, I leaned into it as much as I possibly could. And by leaning into it, I mean, I just really got myself consistently going to church more, um, reading my devotionals more and prayer. Prayer was and still is everything to me. I would literally just spend as much time as I needed just praying and talking, like having a legitimate conversation with God and just listening for him, listening to his, for his voice and asking him to speak to me. And he did, and he does. And, and he's so incredibly powerful with the grace and the blessings that he wants to give to us. He doesn't want us to feel anxious or depressed. And I knew that I just had to open up my mind and open up my heart to receive, to receive those blessings. Um, and so those, those few things, you know, making those small commitments to myself, which slowly but surely added up to bigger commitments. Now that I'm in a place where, God, I freaking feel like myself again, praise God. Uh, I am making much bigger commitments to myself, but I started really small and I gave myself grace to do that. And that's what I encourage you guys to do too. If you're in a place where you're feeling like I did, give yourself some grace. Give yourself grace. Don't expect yourself to feel better overnight. Start small. And that's what I did. I started with small commitments and slowly but surely my confidence built and I increased the size of those commitments that I was making to myself. Um, getting myself into talk therapy and really leaning in with my faith. And the fourth thing that really helped me was pushing myself, regardless of how much my brain and body wanted to stay isolated because let's be real, when you're going through a challenge, isolation is very easy. Like you literally just want to stay in the house and not talk to anybody and cancel plans. And I will be perfectly real. I hurt a lot of my friendships throughout these last six months or so. Um, you know, I, I didn't text back regularly. I canceled plans a lot. And again, I'm not happy or proud of that, but I am just, I'm accepting that that's what happened at that time. I'm not holding resentment towards myself or guilt towards myself. Um, and if you're watching this and you are one of those people that I didn't show up for, I am so sorry. I hope that you can forgive me and provide me grace. And for those of you that are watching my channel these last six months, not showing up here, I hope that you can forgive me and show me some grace. Um, and I'm in a place now where friendships are everything to me. But getting back to my my fourth point, the thing that really helped me was pushing myself to be social. Whether that be an in-person interaction, even just like a 20-minute coffee with a friend um, or a phone call or a FaceTime. I literally, I wish I could show you guys, um, I wrote down basically a list of all of the things that provided me joy. And some of them were as simple as a phone call with a friend, going to get a blowout. Like literally the, the things that might sound like dumb to you guys. Um, I wrote down a list of every little thing that provided me joy. And then I, next to it, I wrote down the amount of times that I would need or want to engage in those things in order to actually feel that joy. So like for instance, going back to like the blowout, getting a blowout twice a month makes me really happy. So I wrote that down getting on a phone call with a friend or seeing a friend face to face. Actually I did phone calls 
four times per week and face-to-face -face interactions two to three times per week. And I stuck to, again, stuck to those commitments. Um, I literally have that list hanging up on my refrigerator downstairs. And the biggest thing I think was really pushing myself to talk to people, to have phone calls, have FaceTimes, get out and be social, even if it was only for 20 or so minutes. And really, like I said, the easiest thing to do when you're feeling depressed is to stay isolated. And I encourage you, even if you start small, even if you start small, if you're watching this video, get on a phone call for 10 minutes with someone today. Go have a coffee with somebody today. Make plans for lunch. You don't have to do anything big. I'm not telling you to plan a five day vacation with a group of friends, but start, start small and do something. Push yourself. I know isolation is comfortable when you feel this way, but it's the exact opposite of what you need to be doing. And I cannot tell you enough how much that really truly helped me. Um, so those four things were massive for me. Um, I know I said that I would touch a little bit on uh, heartbreak. <laughs> um, as you guys know, if you've been following me for a long time, I have literally in the last, I don't know, I've had my Instagram since like 2013. I've literally like never posted a man, a relationship, a boyfriend <laughs> on my Instagram. Cause it's like, I share everything about my life, you know? And so that's one thing that I've always, you know, kept pretty private. Um, but as you may know, I was in a relationship um, around this time last year. And it was the first time in a really long time, probably in three and a half years that I opened up my heart to somebody. Um, and I really did love him. I did. Um, things didn't work out. I have no resentment or animosity towards him. I wish him the best. Um, nothing happened bad, like nobody cheated or anything like that. Just things didn't work out. Um, he moved away and, you know, we just kind of like grew apart and I wish him the best. But regardless of how amicable relationships end, when you really truly give your heart to somebody and things end, it it freaking hurts um, and heartbreak sucks. But if I could give you any advice regarding breakups, heartbreak, it is that the sooner you let go, the sooner you let go, the sooner you can open up your mind and your heart to new blessings that are supposed to be in your life. Um, if you're at a crossroads in a relationship, I really encourage you to sit down and whether it be, you know, visually, verbally, or written, um, write down what your needs are. Think about what your true, at the end of the day, what your true needs are and where your boundaries are too, what you're willing to accept and compromise on. Um, so think about your needs and your boundaries and think about if they're being met and don't settle. Life is too freaking short and it doesn't wait for anybody. And if you feel like you're, there's a difference between settling and compromising. If you feel like you're settling and your needs aren't being met, you get to move on and you get to have it all. We get to have it all in this life, you guys. There is an abundance of everything in this life. There is an abundance of love. There is an abundance of happiness. There is an abundance of financial freedom. There is an abundance of happiness and you get to have it. The only person who says you don't get to have it is you. You get to create your reality and you get to create your destiny. So if you feel like you're settling in any aspect of your life, stop. Stop what you're doing right now. Think about what your ideal outcomes are. Think about how you want to feel. And then think about the actions that you need to put in place to get there. Fired up. Um, I think that's all I wanted to touch on on this video. Uh, I feel so good to be back and, and talking to you guys and being here. I have a schedule of nine YouTube videos, nine coming up. I'm so excited. Um, just providing lots of value and lots of content for you guys. Um, 
I, I'm fully confident that I can commit to at least one video per week um, just with my schedule, with, with work and with my business. Um, my clients always come first. Uh, and so I think one video a week is, is absolutely doable. If I can do more, I will. Um, give me some feedback if you guys are, are excited and, and just if you're just wanting more value and more content, please let me know because the more you guys engage, um, the more excited I get to show up and be here. So um, let me know what you guys want to see as well. Um, I have one really fun kind of video coming up. Um, I'm not gonna say anything yet. Um, I highly advise you to follow me on Instagram because it's kind of gonna be um, something that I'm doing on Instagram that I'm gonna document here on YouTube. So. Um, if you don't follow me on Instagram, it's just at Karen Nicole. I'll put it in my bio and then obviously let me know what you guys want to see as well. It's, this channel is, is for you guys. It always is. Um, and so I hope that me showing up here <laughs> in my raw, authentic, vulnerable state filming from an iPhone because I made a commitment to myself and to you guys and this is dead. Um, so this quality is crap and I have not showered from the gym this morning. <laughs> um, but that's okay, we're here, we're showing up. And at the end of the day, that is the most important part. And that is the biggest advice that I wanna leave you guys with on this video today is to just show up, just show up. If you continue to show up every day, even if it's in the smallest way for yourself, do something to show up for yourself, even if it's small, and you can build upon that, but even if it's small, continue to show up. The world needs you, the world needs your gifts. Continue to show up. And eventually, the breakthrough, it will come and it will happen because life always comes in seasons and there's always sunshine after the rain, always. So if you're in a rainy season right now, I encourage you, keep showing up, you guys. Keep showing up and the sunshine will come out again I mean, I'm a testament to that. It will. Oh, I love you guys so much. Thank you for being here. Thank you for watching. Please, please, please give this video a thumbs up. It really helps and means the world to me. Subscribe to my channel um, and let me know what else you guys want to see. Again, I'm not gonna edit this video. I'm literally just gonna upload it because I just wanna be real and real with you guys. There'll be more like cool, good edits in the future videos, but this ain't it today. Um, wait, I got one more thing I want to show you guys. Poor bar, hold on. Come here, Come here. Come here. Come here. Ugh. All right, you guys. This is Luke, my Lukey boy. <laughs> I've never done a formal introduction of my pepperoni on YouTube. He is the love of my life, and I can also wholeheartedly say that this little guy saved my life this past year. Um, I adopted him on May 30th, 2018, and it was the best day of my life. He's the best. All right, Baba, say bye, guys. Say subscribe to Mama's channel. I'll see you soon. <laughs> bye, guys. <laughs>